Now, listen here, Corporal Castillo, you are not following calculation protocol. I'm sorry, sir. Now get down and give me 25. Okay. No, make that 2.5 times 10 to the 1. Oh, that's so much even harder. Is that acceptable, sir? I suppose it is. Now run algorithms until I get tired. Sound off. One, two. Round off. Three, four. One, two. Three, four. One, two. Three, four. That was stupid. Attention, everybody. No, hi, everybody. Hi, Mike here. Uh, sorry, I got a little carried away with the whole uh, military thing. That's because what we're doing today is calculator camp for Gen Chem 1. Now, in my 20 years of teaching chemistry, particularly general chemistry, there's a lot of calculations. Um, some you can get away with, with um, without a calculator. But I can tell you wholeheartedly and truthfully that many of my students encounter unnecessary problems because they aren't used to the, doing the kinds of calculations they need to do and they don't have a scientific calculator, for example, or they don't know how to use their scientific calculator properly. So I'm going to go through, for Gen Chem 1, the biggest problem, which is the use of exponential or scientific notation. So uh, now I'm gonna, I got about five different calculators here. Why? Because students leave them behind and I have a ton of them in my office. And the day before I retire, I'm just gonna go in there and uh, like lay on top of all of them, I think. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a calculation that would be very common that employs scientific notation because the numbers are gigantically big or small. For example, this is a very common calculation. We'd have to divide 4 divided by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which you can't express on a calculator like this, but I'll show you what you can do. And the first thing is don't let the calculator be smarter than you are. So I'm going to go ahead and one way you could do this with a regular old calculator is, uh, and by the way, this would be the calculation for the mass of one helium atom. So this is not a trivial thing. It's something you'd have to do at some point possibly. So how do we do this with scientific notation? Well, you got to remember that four is just like saying four times 10 to the zero. 10 to the zero, of course, is one. And then what happens is these two numbers divide, as you see. So let's go ahead and do this on our little, this would be a potato calculator, you know? It's not, this would be a 50 cent calculator or something that your uh, grandma would have, you know? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide four divided by 6.02. And uh, this would be 0 0.665, uh, let's do three digits, 0 0.665 times 10 to the, the powers of 10. Then subtract when you divide, they multiply when you, uh, they add when you multiply. So this would be times 10 to the 0 minus 23 is minus 23. Now, one of the things you should do with, our, uh, with the way this is expressed is this is always supposed to be a partial power of 10, something between 1 and 10, and this is the powers of 10. So you'd have to move the decimal point once, making that number bigger, and you don't get that for free. You have to consider the other power of 10, and then you have to say, hey, what is it going to be? 10 to the minus 24, or 10 to the minus, or 10 to the uh, minus, uh, 22, and you can't make both of them smaller, 10 to the minus, uh, both, both of them bigger. 10 to the minus 22 is 10 times bigger than is uh, 10 to the minus 23. So you made this one bigger, you'd have to make this one smaller, and so the proper way of expressing it is that. So we're going to do that calculation about five different times on five different calculators. Now, did you see all that mental work I had to do with the powers of 10? Wouldn't it be nice to just tap a button and have it do it for you. Yes, and it is nice.
But once again, you should be able to keep yourself in check that the number from your calculator makes sense. Don't let the calculator be smarter than you. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. All you Gen Z's out there, you're thinking, well, geez, I got my phone. And so I got an app on my phone. And I'll just use, yeah, don't laugh at my phone. It's like a Samsung Note 4. But look, everybody's phone has a calculator app on it. And then what you could do is you could say, ooh, look at this, what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and type scientific calculator. And I'm going to go do the same calculation. But there's some pitfalls with this, folks. What could happen is you're going to say, okay, four points. Now, I'm doing the wrong thing here, okay? Divided by 6.02 uh, 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 times 10 to the, and then I had to do this y to the x button, and see that, 10 to the 23, and then do a close parentheses, and now before I go and hit enter, you know where you're going to get jacked up here, is it's just going to do it in order. It's going to divide by 6.02 and then multiply by 10 to the 23. So if I did that, I'm going to do that just, uh, you know, you're going to get the wrong number. You're going to get a gigantic number, which is not what you should get when you divide 4 by a gigantic number. When you divide 4 by a gigantic number, you should get a terribly small number. So what happened here? Well, I was missing some parentheses. So if you choose to go this route, you're just kind of uh, sort of choosing to participate in this hellacious thing where you got to make sure you got enough parentheses right. And so I'll show you how what I needed to do is I needed to put parentheses around the 6.02 <laughs> divided by 6.0. <laughs> There's another thing is you don't have nice buttons, you know, and so that's going to get you into trouble. Like on a calculator, you got some uh, buttons. Okay, times, okay, y to the x. Now you got uh, 23, and now look, you got to put a parentheses there to close around the 23, and then 23 uh, parentheses around that, and then you hit that and you got the right number. And then, of course, you're going to have to trim it to, to uh, three digits and call that 6.65, I guess I called it. Okay, well, close enough. So that's not the point of this, is to do sig figs today. So there are some pitfalls with the calculator app on your phone, is that it's not really, even though it says scientific notation, it's not set up that way. So, okay, let's bring out what you'll see when you watch my videos. This is my favorite go-to. This is $10. This calculator is literally $10. So 4.00 divided by, and then I'm going to go 6.02, and on this calculator, every calculator that's scientific calculator has some sort of exponent button, and it doesn't always say times 10 to the whatever, and as a matter of fact, you got to watch out, you don't get confused by this 10 to the x. That's what some of my students do, and then you know what, then they're off by some sort of factor of 10, and then what you do is you hit the double E button. Now, on this particular calculator, it doesn't show you that this is times 10 to the whatever, but the 10 is missing, but this exponent up there means times 10 to the 23, and then there's my answer. All right, so in this particular calculator, you might not like it, but it doesn't show you that that's times 10 to the whatever, and that gets students confused. But I use it, and I know that now. Calculator number two is this Casio here. It's another cheapo calculator. So I'm trying to drill home that you don't really need to spend a ton of money. 4.00, it truncated it for me for some reason. Uh, did I hit divided by already? I forgot. I was talking 4.0. I was distracted by the fact that it rounded it. Divided by 6.02. Now let's go look in here. Here there's an EXP button. And once again, it doesn't show you that that's times 10 to the whatever. And then you hit equals. And there's our answer. All right. So there's here it's EXP. Here it's double E. Every calculator is different. You just got to do this along with me on your calculator, and we'll see how things go. All right. <clears throat> this is probably similar to, you now once again, I don't have access to all the fancy calculators like some of you do. Some of you might have a, a TI. Uh, sorry, it's wet because I sprayed it off with Windex or whatever. 
And, uh, oops, it was turned on. Okay. Because it was all dusty. Now it's wet and it's just awkward. So I'm just going to keep talking about something else. So here's a, a TI-85. This is going to be like your TI-89, your TI-80 anything, your TI-89 titanium. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go 4.00. And then here's double E. But I'm going to divide by 6.02. Now, you see what happens there? It shows it as E. And E means times 10 to the something. Okay, so that means, you know, exponent. And then I'm going to go 23. And then I'm like, on this calculator, instead of equal, I have enter. So I hit enter, and there's my answer. So hopefully you're doing this along with, we've got a TI, we've got a, a Casio that we did, and now I'm going to turn this guy off and let it go over here to dry off. And then I got an HP. Okay, now first of all, when you turn on an HP, there's mode. And if you get stuck in one of these weird modes, you're going to be in purgatory. So especially if you get in this RPN, which is reverse Polish notation. Let's show you what that is. Reverse Polish notation. Two, and then uh, times four, and then enter. Uh, I don't even know what I did. See, there you go. So get the hell out of reverse Polish notation and put it into algebraic and actually you do that by pushing a button. So let's go ahead and clear this and let's go do our number now. 4.00 divided by 6.02 and with this HP, and I'm not sure if it's all HPs, it's just a single E and the same kind of thing though, E. So times 10 to the 23 and then I have to hit enter is over here and there's my number again that's the correct answer for that so uh, you know sorry I failed at reverse Polish notations where you say two and then two and then plus so you know uh, you computer programmers probably love that but uh, not this guy so there's an HP and it's probably similar to your HP whatever whatever the number would be and then turn that off Finally, folks, um, I know you're probably all spending money on books and you're like, hey, well, I got to spend a lot of money. Well, look, hey, there's a calculator from the dollar store. The dollar store had these. And what do you know? If you look close enough, it has an EXP button, exponent. And I don't know how it displays the exponent, whether it's E or whatever, because I had this for years and years on my desk when my students... I bought this because I'm, uh, I'm making that kind of money. But uh, when my students would come in and say, hey, I don't have my calculator, I'd give them one of these to sort of negatively reinforce it. And then I ended up hurting myself because in order to change the batteries, you got to take the back off. And I don't have those batteries, so I can't show you a demonstration of the dollar store battery. Maybe if people clamor for it, I can order some cheapo batteries, which are the weird ones, by the way, LR1130s or something. But there you have it, folks. Every kind of calculator make that you would run into, HP, Casio, a lot of my students usually have one of these TI derivatives of a TI. But you need it because, you don't need it because what we did, but you know, you're going to end up wasting a lot of mental energy doing this kind of stuff. But you should also do a little bit of that to, you know, sort of bulletproof your answer. Make sure, hey, did I divide 4 by a gigantic number so big I can't even imagine and, and get a big number? You know, then, then you shouldn't do that. You should be getting a very small number so small that you can't even imagine because that's the number of grams of a helium atom. So, folks, I hope this gets you off to a good start uh, for general chemistry. And I'm talking to you about it because it's an issue. Know your calculator. Doesn't matter what kind of scientific calculator you have, doesn't matter how expensive it is, uh, know your calculator very well. It is a vital partner in your uh, journey.
we won't call it a war, I already did enough war stuff in the beginning, in general chemistry. So uh, take care, toodaloo, and we'll see you next video.